this video will take a look at the hexadecimal number system. So we already know that computers can only deal with two um, different digits, zero and one. They, they're made up of switches that can only have two possible states. So they can't really handle any more than two digits, zero and one. Uh, and the problem for computer scientists is that very quickly in binary, um, fairly small numbers like the deanery 258, which is only three digits long, starts becoming a huge string of zeros and ones um, of nine digits in this case. Um, and to solve the problem, computer scientists came up with another number system to help deal with these base two numbers, these binary numbers, but without the long strings of digits. And the number system they um, thought up was the hexadecimal number system. So just like we um, did when we looked at the binary number system, remember that when you look at a number, you shouldn't be just seeing this as 11. You should be seeing that this is representing, 1, 1 represents 11 in the deanery number system because the one on the left represents a 10 and the one on the right represents how many ones. But really, that is 1, 1. It's a representation of the number 11. Because 1, 1 in a different number system represents a different value. So in binary, 1, 1 is one lot of two and one lot of one, which adds together to make three. And in the hexadecimal number system, 1, 1 actually represents the deanery value of 17. So what we've got here um, is a new number system that we are going to um, take a good look at now, um, whereby the place values from right to left go up from 1 to 16 to 256 and so on. So whereas in deanery, the right hand digit was 10 to the power of 0, the next to the left would be 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, and so on, 10 to the power of 3 and 4. In binary, it's 2 to the power of 0. The next column would be 2 to the power of 1. The next column is 2 to the power of 2, and so on. With hexadecimal, it's base 16. It's 16 to the power of 0 for the first column on the right-hand side, 16 to the power of 1 for the next column, and 16 to the power of 2 for the next, and so on and so forth. So the hexadecimal number system. So we know the deanery number system has these place values. And we know the binary number system has these place values, four, two, one. The hexadecimal number system has the place values from right to left, one, 16, 256. It's base 16. Now, that causes a little problem from what we already um, can do in terms of um, putting digits within columns. Um, if you think about it, the second column, because it's 16, it means that you have to count to 15 in the ones column before we can place a one in the 16s column. For example, that on the right hand, uh, left hand side is 15 lots of one, no 16, so that means 15. And on the right hand side, it's one lot of 16, no lots of one, so that value is 16 in hex. Now the issue that we've got is that in all number systems you can't put two digits in one column. So we can't actually represent the number 15 like you can see on the screen. So what we do in the hexadecimal number system is we have, we have to use new symbols to represent the values 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. A single um, character if you like to represent those. And what we use are letters. So have a look at this table. On the left hand side we've got base 10 number system, deanery, as we um, are very familiar with. And on the right hand side you've got the digits that represent um, the values that you can see on the left. So you've got 0 representing 0, 1 in base 16 representing uh, 1 in deanery. You've got 2 in hexadecimal representing a 2 in deanery. But then if we move down when we get to 10, we can't represent um, in base 16 with those two digits because we're still in using just one column. So what we do is we represent 10, the value 10, with an, the letter A. We represent the um, value 11 with a B, the value 12 with C, the value 13 with D, the value 14 with E, and the value 15 with F. And converting between hexadecimal into deanery is nice and straightforward. 
So for example, if we had the hexadecimal number 1, 3, that represents 1 lot of 16 and 3 lots of 1. So the deanery equivalent of this hexadecimal number is simply 16 plus 3. 1 lot of 16 plus 3 lots of 1 is 3. Add them together and you get the value 19. So 1, 3 in hexadecimal is the value 19. So if we have a look at this one, 1f, now you need to remember what f represents. On the left hand side we've got 1 lot of 16 and on the right hand side remember that f represents 15 so we've got 15 lots of 1. So if we want to work out what that value, the value of that hexadecimal um, number is, 1f is 16 plus 15, 1 lot of 16 plus 15 lots of 1s which makes 31. So the value of the hex number 1f is 31. So if we had AF, on the left hand side, that's A lots of 16. Now remember what A is, A is 10, so that's 10 lots of 16. And on the right hand side, F is 15, so that's 15 lots of one. So what we've got here is we've got 160 on the left column, and on the right column that represents 15. So if you were to add 160 with 15, you'd get 175. So AF, the hexadecimal number AF, represents the value 175. Now converting deanery into hexadecimal is a little harder, but it's, it's not that difficult. You simply count how many 16s fit into the number that we're trying to convert. So if we've got the deanery number and we're trying to convert it into hex, see how many 16s fit into that number, place the answer in the 16s column, and then place the remainder in the ones column. So if we were to convert the deanery number 20 into hexadecimal, we would say how many 16s fit into 20? The answer is 1, so we put a 1 in this column. Then the remainder is 4, so we put a 4 in the right hand side column. Now remember, that number 1, 4, the hexadecimal number 1, 4 represents 20. And it's simply because 20 is made up of one lot of 16 and four lots of one. So again, you count how many 16s fit into the column, you place the answer in the 16s column, sorry, how many 16s fit into the number, place the answer in the 16s column and the remainder in the ones column. So if we were to convert four, the deanery number 46 into hexadecimal, how many 16s fit into 46? The answer is two. So our number, deanery number 46 is made up of two lots of 16 and the remainder is 14. Now remember you can't put two digits in the right hand side column in one column there so 14 is represented with an E. So 2E is the hexadecimal equivalent of the deanery value 46. So let's have a look at another. 235 so you ask yourself, how many 16s fit into 235? So the answer is 14. So that's 14 lots of 16. Now 14 is represented by the letter E. And the remainder is 11. Now 11 is represented by the letter B. So the hexadecimal number EB represents the value 235. It's 14 lots of 16 plus 11 lots of 1. So why hexadecimal? So lots and lots of people, you know, do ask why, lots of GCSE students ask me why we use hexadecimal. Yes, the number, um, the, the fewer digits helps, okay, so it helps computer scientists if they're working with uh, shorter strings of numbers, um, of digits, sorry. So if you think about binary, we saw right at the start that fairly small numbers are represented with long, long strings of binary digits, um, and hexadecimal helps to uh, reduce the amount of digits. But there is another reason as well. It's easy to convert between hex and binary and back again. So because computer scientists work with binary numbers, it's really, really helpful that we can convert between hex and binary really quickly. So the ease of converting between hex and binary hopefully will be shown here. Do you notice anything with this binary number and the hexadecimal number? 
probably not at that stage but if we were to split that binary number into two nibbles do you notice anything now well on the left hand side that nibble represents nine it's one lot of eight and one lot of one and on the right hand side that represents one well it's one lot of eight and one lot of 40, uh, four which is 12 it represents the the value 12 which is a c in hexadecimal so by splitting into two nibbles you actually get the value of each digit in your hexadecimal number so you can see on the left hand side the hexadecimal value of 9 is 1001 and the hexadecimal value of 12 is 1100 in binary. So to convert binary into hex, we split the binary byte into two nibbles, like so. We use the left nibble as your left hexadecimal digit, and you've got your right nibble as your right hexadecimal digit. So let's have a look at this one. If we were to convert this binary number into hex, we split into two nibbles. On the left hand side, we've got one lot of eight plus one lot of four plus one lot of one, which is 13, the value of 13 in, um, that we would have it, um, as represented as a D. And on the right hand side, we've got one lot of eight plus one lot of four plus one lot of one, which again is represented as a D in hexadecimal. So having a look at this one, split into two nibbles, and we've got the value of 1 on the left and on the right hand side we've got the value 15 which is represented by an F in hexadecimal so that binary number can be converted into hexadecimal very very quickly and it's con uh, it converts to 1F and it's very simple to do the opposite go from hex into binary you simply look at each of the digits in your hexadecimal and you convert them into binary. So we've got 3, which is 0011. And we've got D, which is 1101. They're the two nibbles that make up the byte. Put those numbers together, or those, those two nibbles together, and you've got the binary value of 00111101. So AB in hexadecimal would convert to 1010, which is 10, and 1011, which is 12. Combine those two nibbles together, and you've got your binary equivalent.